God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your friend in the School of Prayer and Deliverance, Daniel Lukoya. This is our Sunday school now, and we shall be running this Sunday school regularly on Sunday. God bless you in the name of Jesus. This Sunday school will be run on audio messages, while the other broadcasts that I'm going to do will be live. So after the Sunday school and some interlude, we now go into the live broadcast. So two broadcasts on Sunday, one audio, which is the Bible study, and the second one, the live broadcast, which is the prayers and exhortation. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Make sure you connect to the two programs and the recorded ones as well, and all the prayers. All these programs are specially packaged to help you. Don't ignore anyone. Once again, I advise, don't ignore anyone. We are starting a series of studies, which I call Babylon and the End Times. Babylon and the End Time. Today's introduction to that topic, Babylon and the End Time. I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 47 from verse 1 to 7. Please take your Bible. Take your Bible. This is a Bible study. Isaiah chapter 47 from verse 1 to 7. It reads, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstone and grind meal, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. And I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms. I was rough with my people, I have polluted my inheritance, and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient, as thou very heavily laid thy yoke. And thou says, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the later end of it. Neither didst remember the later end of it. Babylon and the end times. A lot of people hear quite a lot of things about Babylon. You hear about the mystery Babylon. You hear about the harlot of Babylon. But you hear these things. Many people don't understand what all these things mean and the implication for the end times. The people of Israel had disobeyed God. Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon at that time, was authorized by God to carry them into captivity. Babylon was that ancient and notorious city, the cradle city of civilization. Babylon was the glory of kingdoms. Babylon was the beauty of the children of pride. Babylon was famous for famine and riches. Babylon was a great commercial center. Babylon was the superpower of their days. They had vast wealth. They had great military power. In fact, Babylon is called the Golden City. It is called the City of Merchants. It is called Babylon the Great. It was remarkable for naval power. Listen, beloved, Babylon is greater in splendor than any kingdom you have ever known. As a power, Babylon was arrogant, secure and self-confident, oppressive, cruel and destructive. In the annals of human history and in the growth of nations, Babylon is unparalleled. Commerce and pleasure flowed like water inside Babylon. Babylon was the epitome of pleasure. Babylon was ruled by noble men like Nebuchadnezzar. Babylon was so great that it stupefied the world in archaeology, and it is also the root of astrology. Take your mind back to the Tower of Babel. You understand better. There is something called the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Those Hanging Gardens of Babylon was a world wonder. Babylon was a religious place. In Babylon alone, there were 53 temples and 180 altars. Babylon was seriously secured. It was a fortified city. It was more than a maximum prison. To think of escape or attack was useless. It was fortified round with a big fence. The wall was 80 feet thick. The wall was 300 feet high. 
Six chariots can lie side by side on the wall of Babylon. For the foundation of the wall, the dog was 35 feet below. If you are thinking of tunneling through the wall, you need to go down 35 feet down. You need to go 35 feet down. Around the walls of Babylon was irrigational digging with water flowing from river Euphrates. They created an artificial lake around the wall of Babylon. If you try to turn it through it, you will get into water. If you jump, you jump into water. Beloved, Babylon was strong. Babylon was fortified. Babylon had two powerful gates, one at the front of the city and one at the back of the city. In between the gates, you have 100 other gates made of brass and iron. This city has tower with soldiers manning them day and night. These soldiers breathe death and slaughter. They keep fierce faces for 24 hours. One of the regrets of Alexander the Great was that he could not capture Babylon. It was a great city. The children of Israel were held in captivity for 70 years inside this Babylon. They cried for home day and night. Things got worse for the Israelites. And that's why you read in Psalm 137. Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the lost song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget our cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughters of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall it be which rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall it be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. This was song of lamentation by the Israelites in Babylon. And it's from here we got that song that is so popular. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and there we wept. When we remembered Zion, for that day that carried us away in captivity required of us a song. But how shall we sing the lost song in a strange land? That is where that song came from. A king took over after King Nebuchadnezzar who was going to even be more wicked than his father, who was saying, I've not only captured you, I've captured your God. I'm praying for somebody today. If there is anything saying this to you, any problem saying this to you today, that they've not only captured you, but they've captured your power. They shall scatter unto desolation in the name of Jesus. They shall scatter unto desolation in the name of Jesus. They shall scatter unto desolation in the name of Jesus. So Babylon has strong kings, and the king worship idols. They worship the sun god. They are so confident in what they are doing. The words of their king were very powerful. It was surrounded by magicians, sorcerers, and astrologers. In the book of Daniel, God showed us what we need to know a lot about Babylon. They had food to last them for 20 years. Babylon in these days was the center of geography. Its arts and culture spread throughout the world. The arts of divination, astrology, accounting, private commercial laws all started from Babylon. You can now see where Satan used as earthly foundational city. It's a city of enchantment and astrology, and from there it spread throughout the world. The physical city was the place where the city was planted by the devil. Babylon was the place where the devil deposited all those wicked powers. The Tower of Babel is part of it. Babylon was a fertile ground for division and enchantment. And the Babel spirit is still there, even as we speak. Balaam that was using curses, that prophet came from Mesopotamia, 400 miles from Babylon. The system of the current world is being controlled by this spirit of Babylon. 
But so much for that for now. So much for that. We we'll get back into more of that as we go on in this study. We now go into Daniel chapter 2 to put history into perspective and to understand deeper things. Please take your Bible as you look at Daniel chapter 2. Open your Bible to Daniel chapter 2. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep taken away from him. Then the king commanded the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syria, O king, live long forever. Tell thy servant the dream, and we show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make it known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your asses shall be made a dunghill. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards, and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream. And who will show the interpretation of it? The king answered and said, I know of certainty that you will gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me, till the time be changed. Therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler that has such things at any magician or astrologer, astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a real thing that the king required. There is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause, the king was very angry and was very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the king known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companion. That's the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That they would desire mercies of the God of heavens concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Let's go to verse 26. Daniel had been brought before the king by the one who rules over them, Ariok. He's been brought before Nebuchadnezzar now. And verse 26. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Betishazzar, Are thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. But I say, God in heaven that reveals secrets and make a note to the king of Nebuchadnezzar, what shall be in the later days? Thy dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are this. As for thee, O king, Thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass thereafter? And need thy revealer secrets make it known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that they shall make known the interpretation to the king, and thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, Daniel now began to recount the dream. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Thank God for revelation. Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image. The king saw a great image. The great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image head was of fine gold. The image had the head of gold. His breast and his arms were of silver. His belly and his thighs of brass. 
his legs of iron. His feet was part of iron, part of clay. Read the description again. The image head, verse 32, was fine gold. His breast and his arm, silver. His belly and his thigh, brass. His legs of iron, his feet, part of iron and part of clay. Thou saw till that a stone was cut out without hands. We smote the image upon the feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer, threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. The image was standing. The image had the head of gold, breast and arms of silver, belly and thigh of brass, legs of iron, but the feet was part iron and part clay. Then a stone cut without hand came, smote not the head, not the chest, not the legs, but smote the image upon the feet that were of iron and clay, and then break them to pieces. Then the iron and the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold were broken to pieces together, and became like the shaft of summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them again. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. What a dream! What a revelation! Daniel now began to interpret the dream. This is the dream and will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given unto thy hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. And now said, Thou art this head of gold. That king and the kingdom of Babylon at that time was that head of gold. And then after thee shall arise another kingdom, inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdue all things. And as the iron that breaketh all this, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in need of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest, the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings, in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God had meant to the king what shall come to pass thereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation therefore is sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is the God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Say thou coolest reveal these secrets. Then the king made Daniel a great man. Daniel was promoted and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. That was the dream, and Daniel gave an interpretation. Glory be to the name of Jesus. We shall continue next week with this Bible study on what those dreams mean and what is the implication for us today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Say this loud and clear. O oh God, arise and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight in the name of Jesus.
O God, arise, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O God, O God, arise, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, so, Father, let your words dwell richly in me in the name of jesus father let your words dwell richly in me in the name of jesus father let your words dwell richly in me in the name of jesus father let your words dwell richly in me in the name of jesus father let your words dwell richly in me in the name of jesus father let your words dwell richly in me in the name of jesus father let your words dwell richly in me in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. 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 God bless you in the name of Jesus. Continue to flow with us in the rest of the broadcasts. We we'll see you again next Sunday at the Sunday School. Studying Babylon and the end times. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. It is your friend again in the School of Prayer and Deliverance, Daniel Lukoya. I am most warmly welcome to today's broadcast. The Lord Almighty will continue to bless your life mightily. Glory be to the name of Jehovah. We thank God for another day, and we thank God for His grace upon your life. Glory be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Close your eyes, bow down your heads, and let us pray. Father, we thank you for the power in the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the victory won on the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you for the mightiness of your name and your power. Father, we thank you because you are a God of righteousness and power. Father, we thank you because there is nothing beyond your authority, nothing beyond your power. Father, we thank you because your word is the eternal word. Your power is the absolute power. Father, we thank you for the ever efficacious blood of Jesus. Power to save, to heal, and to deliver to the uttermost. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Father, lay your hands upon us. Do wonders in our lives. Open our understanding. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're looking at what I call the anointed no. The anointed no. The anointed no. In Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, Peter was saying something, and Jesus had to say no. Matthew 16:21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised against the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offence unto me, for thou severest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. The anointed no. There is a power in the word no. No is an anointed word which has the power to break evil yokes. No is an anointed word which has the power to close evil gates. No is an anointed word which has the power to silence the enemy. No is an anointed word which has the power to bind evil. No is an anointed word which has the power to refuse permission for the enemy to operate. No is an anointed word which has the power to say, you can't come in here. This place is not your habitation. No, it's an anointed word, which has the ability and the capability to pull down strongholds. No one can be used 
by God who does not know how to say an anointed no. No can be used to turn the situation from bad to good. No can be used to turn the situation from wrong to right. Saying a sound, solid, anointed no can free you from burden you really don't need to carry. No is the smallest but most useful word. No is found 1,676 times in the Bible. It is generally a small word in any language. No one can amount to much in life who cannot properly use the word no. The power to say no defines independence. A slave cannot say no. Only a free man can say no. Men have lost fortunes, lost money, lost virtues, lost respect, lost good things. Who could not say no? Inability to say no causes slavery and defines slavery. Time my money, no matter how much the time and the money, they will slip away if you cannot say no. Every disciplined person must say no a thousand times, a thousand times, a thousand times. Many good things are destroyed because no one can say no. No is a small word. Although it's a small word, it takes a big person to use it sometimes. Jesus said no to Satan three times in Matthew chapter 4. Convert us to bread. Jesus said no. Jump from the high place. Jesus said no. Worship me. Jesus said no. Say no is the key to personal strength. If Samson had learned how to say a round, solid, stable, anointed no, he would not have died with his enemies. No has kept millions of people from the path of sin, from the path of fallen evil companion. No is a word that protects virtue. No of a slave like Joseph protected the household of Potiphar. No protected the household of Potiphar. No is the word that protects our honor. No is the voice that protects justice. Pilate had no courage to say no and handed Jesus over. No is the word that protects us from violating God's word. I wish the young prophets in the Bible who listen to the old prophets had learned to say no, we will have had no problems. Remember, yes has meaning only in the presence of no. If Eve, listen very well beloved, if Eve had said no, sin would not have entered into the world. That Shunammite woman, whose child died, said no to death. Neman said no to disease. King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 22 said no to defeat. Too many times we just give up at the edge of our miracles. I want to encourage you. Say no to every obstacle. Say no to the lies of the devil. Say no to defeat all kinds of fear and discouragement. Say no to the devil and whatever he may be bringing to your mind. Take solid steps of self-encouragement. Don't allow discouragement to fill your soul. Say no. Feed on the word of God regularly. 
Say no to any power driving you away from Bible study, driving you away from reading the Word of God. Say no to every power trying that you do not increase your prayer tempo. Say no to any power that doesn't want you to sing praises to God on your own. Say no to every power that doesn't want you to keep your heart. Say no to every power that doesn't want you to watch your words. This is a time we need that anointed no. No. It's a time to tell the enemy no regrouping, no violence, no reinforcement, no argument. One way only. Come out in the name of Jesus. It's time to say, when I say no today, any evil power that will say yes, be bound in the name of Jesus. There are only two words that determine your destiny in life. Yes and no. Yes for the good to come. No for the evil to stay. These two powerful words is a very serious matter. If you do not arrest the progress of evil in your life, they continue marching around as landlords in your house. Sometimes not in deliverance. When we pray for people, certain spirits, they face the deliverance ministers and said no. And when we say, why are you saying no? Get out of this person. They give us answers. I said, no, because it has been dedicated to me from birth. No, she doesn't want me to go. No, our mother gave that to us. No, he or she has made a covenant with us. Come out, say no. So why are you saying no? He said, because I slept with one of our members. Come out, say no. Why are you saying no? He said, because she's our queen. Come out. Dima will say no. So, but why are you saying no? Say she has one of her materials in his possession. These dark spirits always have legal reasons to stay in a life. And they use that strong word, no. Arise today, beloved, and act against any situation surrounding you, act against any sickness. Change your position and God will change your situation right now. Many people have agreed with the enemy for too long. Let me now take you to one of my favorite passages in scripture. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Very powerful scripture. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Are you expressing trouble in any form now, apart from what everyone is going through? Do you feel like problems are coming to you at any direction? And at every direction, problems are finding their ways to you, saying an anointed no this day can end these things. It is true, adversity comes to everybody. Everyone faces difficulties, problems, and hardships. But believers don't quit. Believers don't give up. Good people fall. Good people make mistakes. Good people have setbacks. But they have learned to say no to failure and they have refused to quit. 
You are not a failure when you fall. You are only a learner. You may have been knocked down, but you are not knocked out. The fight is not over yet. You will win if you yet get up and say no to the antics of the enemy. Maybe the devil has knocked you down physically. Right there where you are saying no to them. Maybe it's knocking you down emotionally, spiritually, financially. You are confused, perplexed, and discouraged. You can say no today. The last chapter of your life has not yet been written. And I hope for any situation in which you find yourself. The answer to your problem was there even before the problem came. Before the earth was created, God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit sat down together to discuss your life. They discuss the challenges that will come one day into your life and they design the answers before the problems and challenges ever came. Say no to the lie of the devil. Say no to spiritual blindness. Say no to mental problems. Say no to pestilence. Say no to cripple and deformed situation. Say no to thoughts and acts of suicide. Say no to continuous nightmares. Say no to tendencies to immorality. Say no to incurable disease. Say no to ancestral burdens. Say no to family curses. We are told by the Bible that the whole world is in the grip of the wicked one. But we have authority to say no to this evil group. Authority is union with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have that authority to say no to these things. Authority is union with the Lord Jesus Christ, who was crucified, who died, who was buried, who was raised from the dead, who ascended to heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. I pray that the hand of God will be upon you in the mighty name of Jesus and that you will rule in the presence of your enemies in the name of Jesus and every power that is harassing your destiny they shall all be put to shame in the name of Jesus perhaps you have an evil name it is time to say no to that name to stop calling trouble into your life Job the meaning of Job in the Bible means he cries. Balaam means destruction. Ophini means boxer. Phineas means serpent's mouth. Mera means bitterness. Perhaps the stronghold you have been trying to cast down in an effort to break through to your miracles is your own name. A change may trigger off a chain of blessing as it did for Abraham. Sarah Jacob Jabez. If you have been given a bad name and it's difficult for you to change and a new name of your choice, let the bad name remain silent. Let your friends and associates know your new and additional name. The issue of names also includes your business, your institutions, and your properties. You simply must say no to those bad names. Believers never have big problems but they have big God. One of the greatest lies of the devil is to tell people that things will not change. No problem is too large for God's intervention. No person is too small for God's attention. God knows more about you than you know about yourself. I want you to understand that God cannot lie. God cannot change. God cannot leave us or forsake us. God cannot go back on his promises. God cannot be pleased without faith. God cannot be defeated. God cannot break his covenants. God cannot be late. God cannot be limited or confined. Use that divine authority upon your mouth to shut an anointed no to every enemy of your life. An unanswered no to any situation going on around you. An unanswered no to every pestilence flying around. An unanswered no to every sickness flying around. An unanswered no 
to any incursion of the enemy and anointed no to any progress of darkness. Say that anointed no. God bless you in Jesus' name. Sing this song loud and clear. You are the pillar that holds my life. You are the pillar that holds my life. Master Jesus, you are the pillar that holds my life. Master Jesus, you are the pillar that holds my life. Let us begin to thank the Lord for his grace upon us. Let us begin to thank the Lord for bringing us to this broadcast. Let us begin to thank the Lord for sparing our lives. Let us begin to thank the Lord because it's our shelter in the time of storm. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we adore you. Father, we thank you for your grace, for your love upon us. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. Father, we thank you for upholding us by your power. Father, we thank you because you are the King of Kings, you are the Lord of Lords. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's ask the Lord to forgive all our sins, particularly the sins that have driven us into this particular situation. Let us ask the Lord to forgive us. Father, we ask that you forgive all our sins and you wash all our sins away. In the name of Jesus, we confess all our sins, all the misbehavior, all the dark iniquities, all those things that are not heaven. Father, we confess our sins. Those sins that put Solomon and Gomorrah in trouble, that we are also engaging in, Father, forgive us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. Pray this prayer loud and clear. O oh God, arise and let all your enemies in my life be scattered in the name of Jesus. O oh God, arise and let all your enemies in my life be scattered in the name of Jesus. O oh God, arise and let all your enemies in my life be scattered in the name of Jesus. O oh God, arise and let all your enemies in my life be scattered in the name of Jesus. O oh God, arise and let all your enemies in my life be scattered in the name of Jesus. O oh God, arise and let all your enemies in my life be scattered in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, thou rage of the noisome pestilence, be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noisome pestilence, be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noisome pestilence, be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noisome pestilence, be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noisome pestilence, be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noisome pestilence, be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noisome pestilence. Be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noise and pestilence. Be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noise and pestilence. Be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noise and pestilence. Be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noise and pestilence. Be silenced in the name of Jesus. Thou rage of the noise and pestilence. Be silenced in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every battle assigned to mock my destiny, scatter in the name of Jesus. Every battle assigned to mock my destiny, scatter in the name of Jesus. Every battle assigned to mock my destiny, scatter in the name of Jesus. Every battle assigned to mock my destiny, scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shout this after me ten times. No evil shall be for me. Neither shall any plague move into my camp. No evil shall be for me. Neither shall any plague move into my camp. No evil shall be for me. Neither shall any plague move into my camp. No evil shall be for me. Neither shall any plague move into my camp. No evil shall be for me. Neither shall any plague move into my camp. No evil shall be for me. Neither shall any plague move into my camp. No evil shall be for me. Neither shall any plague move into my camp. No evil shall be for me. Neither shall any plague move into my camp. No evil shall be for me. Neither shall 
any play booth into my camp. No evil shall befall me. Neither shall any play booth into my camp. A sevenfold amen, 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 amen. Can you shout this again loud and clear? Every eater of flesh and drinker of blood, I am not your candidate. Die in the name of Jesus. Every eater of flesh and drinker of blood, I am not your candidate. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. I'm not your candidate. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every tormentor assigned against me, scatter in the name of Jesus. Every tormentor assigned against me, scatter in the name of Jesus. Every tormentor assigned against me, scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, I say no to every unrighteous of infirmity assigned against me in the name of Jesus. I say no to every unrighteous of infirmity assigned against me in the name of Jesus. I say no to every unrighteous of infirmity assigned against me in the name of Jesus. I say no to every unrighteous of infirmity assigned against me in the name of Jesus. I say no to every unrighteous of infirmity assigned against me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Any problem assigned to bring greater problems into my life, I silence you now in the name of Jesus. Any problem assigned to bring greater problems into my life, I silence you now in the name of Jesus. Any problem assigned to bring greater problems into my life, I silence you now in the name of Jesus. Any problem assigned to bring greater problems into my life, I silence you now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So any power assigned to quench my life, die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any power assigned to quench my life, die by fire in the name of Jesus. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is written that the strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid of their close places. Say this loud and clear. I say no to any stranger in my body in the name of Jesus. I say no to any stranger in my body in the name of Jesus. I say no to every stranger in my body in the name of Jesus. I say no to every stranger in my body in the name of Jesus. I say no to every stranger in my body in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen can you say this loud and clear you strong man of health destruction I am not your candidate die in the name of Jesus you strong man of health destruction I am not your candidate die in the name of Jesus you strong man of health destruction I am not your candidate die in the name of Jesus you strong man of health destruction I am not your candidate die in the name of Jesus you strong man of health destruction i am not a candidate die in the name of jesus you strong man of health destruction i am not a candidate die in the name of jesus in jesus name we pray amen as we continue praying let's look at what the book of amos says so that you can put what is happening now into proper perspective and be able to pray with wisdom in this matter and be able to pray with wisdom in this matter in the book of amos Amos chapter 3, look at what it says in verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? People are afraid now. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Meaning that nothing happens without divine permission. And by all things can be arrested by his power. Can we say this loud and clear? Holy Ghost arise. 
overshadow me and my family by your presence in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, arise. Overshadow me and my family by your presence in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, arise. Overshadow me and my family by your presence in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, arise. Overshadow me and my family by your presence in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say any ancient battle assigned to pull me down. I bury them now in the name of Jesus. Any ancient battle assigned to pull me down, I bury you now in the name of Jesus. Any ancient battle assigned to pull me down, I bury you now in the name of Jesus. Any ancient battle assigned to pull me down, I bury you now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you shout this loud and clear? No weapon formed against my health shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against my health shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against my health shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus, then we pray. Amen. Father, I'm praying for your children who have gathered here. I decree by the decree of heavens that it shall be well with you. Any yoke of the enemy assigned against you shall be broken to pieces. Father, you are the great physician. Overshadow your people by the presence of your power. In the name of Jesus, let your people know, let them see, let them experience your power in the name of Jesus. Father, let your spirit flow all over the environment and let your spirit sanitize the environment. Let every pestilence flying about be disgraced in the name of Jesus. Oh, heavens, arise in your mercy and your power and put to shame every enemy of our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, move in a new way. Cover your people. Protect your people. Lord, let there be a cessation of all this courage in the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and let every enemy of our health, every enemy of our destiny, every enemy of our well-being be scattered now in the name of Jesus. Father, let your mercy speak in this situation. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have this infirmity in your body, or you feel you have any infirmity in your body, if you bring out your water now, we're going to pray on them. Or the oil. Father, let your anointing fall upon the water all or any faith material like a man to brought here. Let your anointing fall upon them in the name of Jesus. Let them become material of healing, material of deliverance and power, material that will break every yoke of the enemy. Let them become materials that will destroy every plantation of darkness. Let your power overshadow these materials. Let your anointing flow into the water, flow into the oil, flow into the mantle, and let them destroy every plantation of infirmity. Let them put to shame every arrow of infirmity. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you in Jesus' name. Join the broadcast now. Please know that all these programs are put together to help and strengthen us at this hour. Whether it is a live broadcast, whether it's a recorded broadcast, whether it's prayer session, make sure you participate in all three. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Now, settle down and join the rest of the broadcast. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.